The most basic residual income valuation model breaks the intrinsic value of a stock into two elements, the current book value of equity and the present value of expected future residual income. The premise of this is simple. In an idealized world, the book value of equity represents the fair value of its net assets. If the firm is not forecasted to earn economic profit, the intrinsic value of equity should be simply its book value. Investors wouldn't want to pay more than the book value if no economic profits are expected. However, if the firm is forecast to earn economic profit, the expected value add should be reflected in the company's stock price today. This should be the sum of the present values of expected residual income. You probably see the problem here. How do we forecast the residual income in perpetuity? We'll leave that for later, but for now, let's learn the basics by studying a firm that's expected to stop operations in three years, so we have a finite number of residual income to consider. A company operating in an obsolete industry currently has a BVPS of $40. The expected EPS for the next three years is $6, $4 and $2 respectively, after which the company will cease operations permanently. The dividend payout ratio is expected to be 60% for the first two years and a final liquidating dividend of the remaining book value plus final earnings is expected in the final year. Based on these estimates, calculate the residual income for the three years and the current intrinsic value of the company's stock. You may assume the required return on equity to be 12%. You may find this a bit complicated if you're attempting this for the first time. As a hint, you may want to calculate the ending book value as the beginning book value plus earnings minus dividend. The residual income for each period, as we've learned in the last lesson, is earnings minus the equity charge, which is the beginning book value times the required return on equity. Pause the video now and work out your answer. And we're back. Let's first calculate the BVPS based on the given estimates. In the first year, the beginning book value is given as $40 and $6 EPS is expected. Based on 60% payout, dividend is $3.60, so the ending BVPS is expected to be $42.40 for the first year. This value is also the beginning book value for the second year and given an expected EPS of $4, $2.40 in dividend is expected so the ending BVPS is $44. And for the final year, $2 EPS is expected and a final liquidating dividend of the book value plus final earnings, which total $46, should be paid out to shareholders and the company cease operations with zero book value remaining. Based on the beginning book value and the given required return of 12%, we calculate the equity charge for each year. The residual income for each year is the EPS minus the equity charge. Notice that for the second and third years, the figures are negative. This implies that the company will not be earning enough to cover the shareholders' required return, so liquidating the company in due course may be the best course of action for the shareholders. With the residual income calculated, we can finally bring in the basic form of residual income model. The intrinsic value of the stock should be the current book value of $40 plus the sum of residual incomes, discounted by the required return of 12%. You should get an intrinsic value of $37.87 per share. You could also punch these figures into your cash flow calculator and you should get the same result. Now, this approach may be suitable for companies that will be discontinued soon, but, as mentioned earlier, won't be suitable for most firms as they're assumed to be operating for the long term. Thankfully, like for discounted cash flow, we can make the simplifying assumption of a constant earnings growth rate. This way, we can develop a model that allows us to calculate the intrinsic value of the company's future residual income. Based on the Gordon growth model, which assumes a constant rate of earnings, you may recall the justified PB from the last topic on market-based valuation. We can show that this is mathematically equivalent to this expression. 
Rearrange, we get the intrinsic value of equity. Comparing with our earlier expression on the most fundamental form of the residual income model, we can equate the intrinsic value of the future residual income to this expression. This expression tells us that like all other valuation models, the earnings growth rate is an important determinant of a stock's valuation. More importantly, the ROE is the primary determinant of residual income. When the return on equity is higher than the required return, the firm is making economic profit. From this relationship, we can also clearly see that the constant growth residual income model, also known as the single stage residual income model, is very closely related to the justified PB ratio. A company with a high justified PB ratio will be expected to earn high residual income in the future. Another closely related concept to the residual income model is Tobin's Q, the ratio of the market value of debt and equity to the replacement cost of total assets. Although similar in concept to PB, which is market value of equity over book value of equity, Tobin's Q has some obvious differences. The numerator includes the market value of debt as well, so the denominator uses total assets rather than equity. Furthermore, assets are valued at replacement cost rather than at book value. Likewise, a company with higher Tobin's Q will be expected to earn higher residual income in the future. Now that we're done with all the theory, let's jump into some calculations. Sharp & Corp's book value per share is $125 and its current share price is $190. An analyst expects its long-term earnings growth rate to be 4% and long-term dividend payout ratio to be 50%. Assuming cost of equity to be 6.5%, calculate the present value of expected economic profit and determine if the company's stock is undervalued or overvalued using the single-stage residual income model. Pause the video now and work out your answer. And we're back. Let's first bring out our single-stage residual income model. We're already given book value, long-term growth rate, and the cost of equity, which is the required return. The only term that's missing here is the ROE. Since we know that the sustainable growth rate is the retention ratio times the ROE, the long-term ROE can be estimated as the long-term growth rate divided by the retention ratio which is 1 minus the payout ratio. This gives us an ROE of 8%. Plug the figures into the model. The intrinsic value of the stock is therefore $200. From here, we note that the present value of future economic profits is $75. We expect this to be positive as the ROE is higher than the required return. And since the intrinsic value is higher than the current stock price, the stock is currently undervalued. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.